On today's show, the San Diego Padres don't have a day off, but class is still in session, giving the letter grades for the Padres pitchers so far through 2024, and we're facing the Dodgers, so, you know, can they stack up with that monster lineup? Have they impressed us so far? Well, we'll have to see. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Padres. Your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Locked On Padres Podcast, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for Friday, April 12th. As always, I am your host, with sometimes, occasionally, but certainly not always, the most Javier Reyes. You can follow me on Twitter at Javipeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. You might be familiar with my illustrious, illustrious portfolio of work, especially on baseball from the site Just Baseball. It's a great website. Go check it out. I also have a podcast that just launched on there called Baseball vs. the World. If you want more fun topics on general baseball culture, from movies to pop culture stuff to to breaking down potentially the show has how to gambling stuff all that sort of stuff check that out guys today's episode we are breaking down though not general baseball because it's lockdown Padres okay we're talking about Padres stuff and we are grading giving some letter grades to the Padres pitchers so far this year and um this should be a fun one it won't be maybe as in depth as yesterday's episode um only because Batters play every day, pitchers do not. So I don't have quite as much data from my liking. I've often said before in the past that I like, you know, four starts or so before I start to really look at a pitcher because some guys just get hit up a lot at the beginning. Some guys didn't have a good spring training. They're just a little bit rough. They're still testing things out. So pitchers can be a little bit harder to gauge, especially relief pitchers, who we're going to talk about briefly on this too. Um, But even still, folks, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. A fun one. Uh, today's episode, guys, though, is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. 150 bets, bucks, win or lose. I can't talk today. Uh, go check that out. FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And we're going to start this one off with an obvious one. You see it. You see it. Hold on. There. You see it. On the ticker over to your right, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, Dylan Cease is the first person we got to talk about. And I mentioned on yesterday's episode that there was only one player that I think deserves the true A plus uh, for the Padres pitching or hitting. So that is still the case here. But I'm giving Dylan Cease a start uh, with the Padres an A, although you could talk me into A minus. But f- just fundamentally, again, this is the thing, though, is that it's really hard to do this for pitchers. In my experience, like I I stand by that. I just think that you need a lot more, you know, time and whatnot to get through all this. But even still, um, Dylan Cease has basically been as advertised so far with the Padres. His three starts that he's had have been impressive. Um, They haven't been necessarily, oh, my God, this dude's the Cy Young. That's the one thing I'll say about Cease. It does not look like that Cy Young upside through these first few starts hasn't necessarily shown itself, but 2.16 ERA, his first start, four and two thirds. That's basically his worst start of the season when some of the walks came out a little bit and kind of he, he it took him a while to, I shouldn't say walks, he only had two walks in the game. His inefficiency sometimes, you know what I mean, that he sometimes has, that came out a little bit more um, in that game, but it was against San Francisco who had a really hot start and I actually do like San Francisco. But more importantly, the whip is really low this year, right? Like 0.84, he's just not allowing a lot of hits. So while... He's not necessarily stopping like the big hits, right? You saw on what was it? Um on Wednesday in Wednesday's game that he gave up that two run shot, right? That ended up tying the game. Now, of of course the Padres went on to win pretty easily. So he has given a couple of shots every now and there. But what I like about him, um, most impressively, is the fact aside from the ERA and whatnot, his velocity's up. And I think that's really important. And don't get me wrong, guys, especially early on in small sample size, as I've been repeating many times can definitely give you a lot of that. Um, it could vacillate. I think the velocity sometimes, but what I do like is that this was a big, one of the not biggest, but one of the little bullet point kind of red flags for Dylan C's coming to year is that the fastball velocity went down last year. And one of the arguments I made was, I just don't think that at age 28, he's that's going to happen for this type of pitcher who is made able to throw hard, basically 
all of his career, dare I say. I just don't see it just randomly dying. And also, it's worth noting that, like, the guy had, like, the worst team ever last year. You know what I mean? It was a nightmare. And he must be just thrilled. I mean, I love seeing, like, the videos of, like, just – I just like seeing him because I like to imagine that he's on this team just in heaven. And he's just like, look – like, if I do well here, it'll be great. It's a better pitcher ballpark. I've got a better defense behind me. And I'll actually pitch for a team that might win some games, right? Because the Chicago White Sox, arguably the worst team in baseball. Um, it seems like it's the Marlins right now, but the White Sox, it's them and the Marlins are probably the worst teams in baseball. And then the A's, right? So, you know, he's – the fact that his velocity is up, I do think that is a plus since that was one of the little red flags uh, heading into the season for him. So I like that. I also like that – while he's not generating as many whiffs necessarily uh, as he was last year on his four-seam fastball, he's only generating 12.3% of the time, the slider has been excellent. And that is something that he generated a lot of whiffs on last year, and it was his put-away pitch. And this year it's actually up by 5%, the whiff percentage. He's had a couple strikeouts that you'll see on Pitching Ninja's Twitter page. You know, like a couple of strikeouts where you're like, whoa. Like, when this guy's on, nobody's hitting him, and you have better chance that, that he gets a walk. What I do like, though, is that batters just haven't hit his fastball so far. They're batting under 100 against it. They bat 273 against it last year. And again, I think that's because of a little bit of velocity. Maybe he just wasn't throwing it all out of the field. You know what I mean? To the same degree as he is now, being a little bit reinvigorated, maybe, by being on this Padres team. No, don't get me wrong. The velocity jump hasn't gone up by like three miles per hour or anything like that, but it's still significant enough to talk about. And I like that he's using the slider much, much more as his put away pitch. 31.9% of the time this year, 23.1% of the time last year. So that's just really cool. Could that be a Niebla thing where he's more focusing on fastball slider combinations rather than the knuckle curve and the sweeper? Something that he has been experimenting with. This year, by the way, uh, his changeup, he hasn't been using that much either. But I think it's interesting that he's been experimenting. He's thrown, you know, not too many of them, but he's still thrown some sweepers, uh, which I think is interesting because that's kind of like a new pitch. So maybe he's just working on that. We'll see how that goes. Um, I enjoy that. But it's just, you know, we've seen that Niebel before uh, with Blake Snell kind of seem to just get him to be like fastball slider heavy. And that's what kind of started his bounce back and what made him then evolve. He got back on track with the Padres. I'm talking like 2021. And then 2022, 2023, he started going back to some other pitches. So I think that that's really cool. I wouldn't also uh, freak out if you're worried about like some of the exit velocities on some of the stuff he's given up. I just think that he's one of those pictures that does that. So average exit velocity is up a little bit this year, but I just don't think that that's something that I would apply to him. It's a little bit similar to Darvish where it's like, yeah, if you make contact with this guy, it's going to get hit hard um, for a pitcher like him who's trying to strike guys out. You know, if, if, if you're Musgrove, I think that Musgrove, that, that's the type of pitcher that if you're relying on generating soft contact, like that's usually what you do rather than strikeouts, then I think that's what we're, we're, bleh, worth looking into. And the other thing, what I really like, just tiny, tiny little thing, ground ball rate. Um it's not great so far, but again, it's only three starts. 27.5%, that's really bad um, for that much. And then for fly ball percentage to also be up this year, I think that means that he is going to be due for like a home run, a jack, uh, like maybe a start at some point where he might get hit up. Maybe it's this weekend against the Dodgers. I hope not, but I'm just saying those rates are a little bit off right now, um, especially because he's allowing more pulled balls too. And if, 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 if batters are pulling more balls and there's more fly balls than last year, he's going to be having you know, some game that he gets hit up. And so don't get me wrong, a regression start is happening, but he's still been really solid. The only thing is that the numbers are not, I haven't seen anything where I'm like, oh my God, he's winning the Cy Young this year. And that is not a diss. I still gave him an A for a reason. So shafts to Dylan C's, very, very happy. There's a reason why he's had Spencer Strider and Justin Verlander, uh, you know, even Nick Pavetta, Drew Masmussen, according to baseball um, savant sort of comparisons before. He's lived up to it. Even if I don't think he's going to go Cy Young super mode um, at this point, he's still been awesome, and he deserves a lot of credit as basically the best Padres pitcher uh, so far this year. And I'm excited. I'm really, really excited to see what he does uh, in his next start um, against – actually, he's probably not good at pitch against the Dodgers, though I think about it. Who am I kidding? Yeah, he probably he'll, he's probably going to miss them. I don't know, actually. Will he? I don't know, guys. I mean, he pitched on yesterday. And then he, maybe he'll catch the Sunday game. I don't know. We'll have to see, ladies and gentlemen. But, but before we talk about the rest of the Padres' rotation and some other players, including the bullpen, um, this 
Cease is actually the only A that I've given uh, for any of the Padres so far. But don't worry. Don't worry. It's it's okay. I actually really like what the pitching's been so far. But before we talk more about the rest of these players and my analytical way that I know you guys love so much. Uh, before we do that, guys, let me just take a second to talk to you about... Let's see here. Oh, ho, 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 ho. something very, very nice. It saves you money, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you love it when you save money? It is our good friends over at Ibotta folks and here's the thing when you're making purchases it's the spring the spring is sprunging maybe you want to get some baseball gear maybe you want to get some jerseys or maybe more importantly you want to get grocery shopping done you know we're heading back into the summer you're gonna have to get those you know supplies and appliances and whatnot in your room and guess what guess what ladies and gentlemen you can get cash back when you use ibotta Ladies and gentlemen, it is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to to video games, whatever, right? They've got you covered so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns up to 250, I shouldn't say average, up to. It's just the average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, maybe a plane ticket, maybe some cool, sick art painting you've been wanting to get. Hey, a game ticket to see the Padres in like front court seats or not front court, like right behind home plate. I don't know. They probably cost a little bit more than that. But still, it, 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 it contributes a lot. So go check that out, guys. Other apps give you points that don't amount so much, but Ibotta, they help you out just add your offers in the app upload your receipt and get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account paypal or gift cards join over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2700 brands and retailers including some of your favorite grocery stores lowe's macy's sephora best buy and many more right now ibotta is offering our listeners five dollars just for trying it by using the code locked on mlb when you register go check that out in the apple play or google play store so it's apple store and then google play store there we go uh, and download the free ibotta app to start earning cash back and remember that code lockdown mlb for five dollars just like that ladies and gentlemen that's ibotta i-b-o-t-t-a in the google play or app store and use code lockdown mlb go check it out And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the Lockdown Padres podcast. We are thriving, we are vibing, and we're getting into some more pictures. Again, Cease is kind of the one that I did the biggest deep dive on. And there's not, I really do think that like pitching is a little bit weird. I will say that with the Padres, it's been the individual players on the offense have been great. They just haven't really been great as a team. The individual players on the pitching, not as great. And that's why I only have someone that I'm giving 1A right now, and that's Dylan Cease. You could actually even argue that he was an A-, minus, but even still, next up, I have two B-pluses. I've got Eniel De Los Santos and Matt Waldron. Matt Waldron being the most surprising one, but really quickly with Eniel, look, this is, like, honestly, my impressive... My I'm more impressed with Eniel only because, like, this was one of those players who you had heard reports that in spring training he might not make the team, which was a little bit of a red flag, and being like, oh, no, don't tell me Preller just did a, did a salary dump and that was it. But, you know, he exchanged Scott Barlow for him, and you saved some money that you were able to shell out for Yuki Matsui, which I think was really great, and Musak Go. And Angel De Los Santos has been really steady so far, um, in fact, and I actually really like what he's done. He isn't striking out a lot of batters, but I'm not freaking out about that. I think it's going to get better. Um He's got a, currently a 16.7% strikeout rate, but 1.5 ERA. He's been awesome, and I don't think that there's some sort of like tremendous luck here. You know what I mean? I don't think that he's been getting like significantly lucky, and the 16.7% strikeout rate is at least not horrible. It's not great, but it's not very good, but it's not horrible, and he's counteracting that with a really low walk rate. That, I think, is what has been so impressive about him. The control looks solid, and the one time he gave up runs was like... A weird game, right? When the, what was it, that launched, what was it, Michael Conforto or Tyro Estrada? I think it was Tyro Estrada launches one. He hits the bat. It was just weird nerve things, and they, Padres should have scored before that. So that's not, that wasn't on him. It wasn't great, but that's like the only runs he's really given up. So when he was in his zone, in his role, what he's used to, and what is expected of him, he's thrived so far this year. And I, I think that it's going to continue to a degree. Um, don't get me wrong, he will go up a little bit. His ex-FIP is significantly higher this year, 5.02, although his regular FIP is 2.88. So I, that basically means, in my opinion, 
a he'll give up some runs, right? Like that's going to happen at some point. I don't think this guy's like Josh Hader all of a sudden or Alex Colome, if you guys remember, that was a guy who didn't strike out a lot of batters but just limited hard contact. I like what I've seen from Des Santos and I think that overall limiting the hard contact is great. And for a reliever like him, especially because I I mentioned Scott Barlow, who I can't actually find. How has he been by the way? How has Barlow been so far? Has he been good for the Guardians? I hope he has it. Just because then I'll be able to brag that Preller did well again. Um, so far on the season, he's rocking a 6.35 ERA. So, so far, not too bad, ladies and gentlemen. Although his strikeout rate's better. But so far, so good for Daniel De Los Santos. Matt Waldron? Um, yeah. My second highest graded starter. Part of this has to do with the fact that his role and expectations aren't nearly as high. But... He has the third highest war of any Padres pitcher so far. And I don't love using war for pitchers, but even still. Um, And what I like is while, yes, he has a 3.86 ERA, his FIP is really, really good. Uh, 2.67. And his XFIP is 3.12. So he's actually pitched a little bit better than some of the numbers suggest. And the 27.9% strikeout rate is impressive. Um, I like what I've seen from him. For a guy who's the fifth starter, can he Zach Davies himself? Into, like, a good season. For those who remember Davies, like, kind of just not throwing all that hard. Just a lot of trickery. I think he could. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm really impressed with what I've seen from him so far um, with Waldron. Is he going to get lit up at some point? Probably. But this is the guy's the fifth starter. And the top of this rotation, because of Cease, I think the upside is lifted um, higher than it was potentially last year. And, again, I like the strikeout rate, and I like that he's not walking too many batters. Is this going to continue? No, but I haven't seen anything that suggests he's going to be terrible. And, again, I just – this was a competition, and we were wondering, is it going to be Brito? Is it going to be Vasquez? And he's done a really good job. This is the fifth starter, so that's why he's ranked so high. I think that there are other players that have been better. Cease, obviously. I think you can make an argument that Darvish has been better. A very nuanced argument, but even still, I like that. So, so far, Matt Waldron, shouts to you, my friend, because I was wrong. I was not impressed with Matt Waldron. I mean, I, the, one of the a common bit on this show is I kept calling him Michael Waldron because I'm a Marvel head, and he's one of the writers for Marvel right now that's kind of blowing up. So I kept doing that because I'm a jerk. Um, a little bit of that, but I also just genuinely forgot. So shouts to Matt Waldron, B-plus for him so far on the year. In terms of the Bs... I've got you, Darvish, and Robert Suarez. Um, Suarez, man, that inning on Monday after the eight-run comeback. To go, it is so underrated. The Jake Cronenworth um, at-bat was underrated. And Robert Suarez coming in and just going one, two, three and striking out, that was really impressive. Um, I really like what I saw from Suarez um, in that one appearance. But overall, the reason why he's not as high is because the walk rate hasn't been great. His control has been lacking. He has given up a couple home runs. Uh, 13% walk rate is like one of the highest among all the consistent pitchers that the Padres have had so far, particularly in the bullpen. Um, only Michael King, really, in terms of starters, has a higher walk rate than him. So that's a little concerning. But 34.8% strikeout rate, that's back. I love to see that from Suarez. Um, that's arguably the most important thing about him. And not just the strikeout rate, but he's getting more whiffs on his fastball. And that was even more concerning than just the strikeout rate. Last year, his whiff percentage on his fastball was 25.6%. This year, it's 36.7%. So that's really good. He's using more his four-seam fastball. He's actually used his sinker a lot more this year too, which I think is interesting. But he's had a little bit more... He's really gone fastball heavy so far, and it's had some good extension. I like it. I think he's been pretty solid. The only thing with him, though, is that um, he has gotten hit a couple times. The exit velocity went up a tad bit, um, which I'm not thrilled by. And what else we got here from Suarez that I put in my notes? Um, Jenny more whiffs and whatnot already. I could actually argue that he belongs in the, the, the B-plus tier, actually, the more I think about it. You know, I really like that the whiff percentage is up, but... Still giving up some hard hits. And the control. The control is the big thing. So I'm hoping that he gets that back. Like, he's had a couple scares that could have resulted in some Padres L's if things didn't bounce his way. So very optimistic about him. But again, this is relief pitchers doing a report card on them. It's tough, right? Like, it's way too early. But even still, that's what I've got so far for him. And you, Darvish. Darvish is the reason why he's only a B is, yes, the ERA has been solid. Right So far through the year, he's got a 3.86 ERA. Um, and basically until that last start that he had, he'd been really good uh, for most of the year. But he gave up four earned runs in, in three innings. So as far as we know, 
no sort of injury to speak of. And that's why I think it's worth highlighting that none of his metrics look good. Even last year, his advanced peripherals, even if you just look on Savant and whatnot, were like pretty okay, suggesting he got a little bit unlucky. For example, his expected ERA last year was, let me see if I can find it real quick. It was 3.82 compared to his 4.5 that he finished with. This year, he's got an expected ERA of 4.78, which is like the highest since 2018. And for those who don't remember, 2018 was a mess for him. So the fact that he's giving up harder hits as well, 38.2% hard hit rate last year, 54.9 this year. And he is the type of pitcher that it doesn't freak me out when he gets hit hard because that's kind of something that's always been the case, especially for a pitcher like him. Um, that's just something he's done. But launch angles up, max exit velocities up, exit velocities up, and not in negligible ways. So I, I do think that that's worth bringing up. And yes, it has been late. It has been early, but weighted on base, all that sort of stuff is a lot higher. So I'm a little bit worried about Darvish. The biggest thing, though, is the fact that he's not, as of right now, we don't have any injury um, designation. And I've been very critical of them giving out that contract in the first place. So hopefully this isn't going to get really bad. I think he could be a solid starter. I still think so. But the peripherals combined with the fact that he doesn't have an injury right now, that makes me a little bit concerned. So that's my thing on him. But ladies and gentlemen, we're not done. No, uh uh no, 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 no. We've still got a couple more starting pitchers that you might be wanting to know. What am I going to give them so far? Oh, yeah. What are we going to do, folks? Well, you'll have to just wait a second, guys, because we have to talk about our friends over at FanDuel. That's right, folks. We talk about FanDuel a lot. But, hey, baseball, we're right in the thick of it. We're killing it. Basketball, guess what? NBA playoffs are starting, like, real, real soon. NHL playoffs, I think, are starting or starting real soon. March Madness, finished. So you should have checked it out then. But still, whatever it is, guys, FanDuel has you covered. Customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Go check it out. Bet on everything from strikeouts to walks to home runs to total bases to stolen bases to specifically, not batting average, but total hits for a game. Whatever you want to do, folks, they've got you covered all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Go visit fandle.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic W. Just like when the Padres bats hit with runners in scoring position. You know what I mean? Once they do that, it's a W. Once you go check this out, it's an automatic W. That's what FanDuel is here to help you out for. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But a lot of sports going on, guys, seriously. So go check it out. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And just like that, guys, we are back after talking about FanDuel. And really, that was one of my weirder ad reads in a while. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll give you some MLB future odds. Because let me tell you, there's been some good Padres ones lately. Um, let's continue talking now. Let's get into the C's. And this is going to come off bad. But again, it's very, very early. And I, you know what? I'm going to edit this. B minus. I'm changing my thoughts on Michael King. I'm giving him a B minus. The reason why I thought about giving him a C plus was because the walk rate is really high and the velocity is down. Um, but, but, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think Michael King deserves a C plus or a B minus? I don't know. I don't know. I don't like that. His I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back. To stick with my gut. C plus. The reason why I'm gonna do that is because one, his peripherals aren't great. Two, his velocity is down. The only thing about him that I do like is that he's really impressed with some of the whiffs so far, particularly on his changeup. But the fact that his velocity is down combines with the fact that he's walked more batters this year, 17.2% walk rate. Now, that's so high. Like, I do think that that'll go down. That's, like, egregiously high, which is one of the reasons I was tempted by it. But for me, it's the velocity. And when your velocity is going down, uh, that's not great. You know what I mean? Across basically every pitch. His sinker last year, 94 miles per hour. This year, it's 92 miles per hour. Four-seam fastball, 94 miles per hour. This year, 93 um, miles per hour. The put-away percentage is a little bit out of whack. He's not generating nearly as many whiffs on he, w- that he was with his sweeper last year. So just all that stuff going down. And again, it is early, so I'm not saying that this is panic. But he's a C-plus for now because of the control and because of the fact that he might have been getting a little bit lucky uh, and his velocity is down. The biggest thing that I don't think has to do with luck and necessarily a small sample size might be the velocity. So don't get me wrong. We'll see. 
Uh, someone actually, I think, mentioned in the comments that like maybe Niebla is prioritizing lasting longer into games, and maybe that's what's happening, and it's lower velocity and whatnot. I forgot. You know who you are, person who left that comment. So that's possible. But for now, C plus, particularly because of the velocity. The other person that gets a C plus for me is Yuki Matsui. And that's because his peripherals haven't looked great. And more importantly, 10.7% walk rate and only a 7.1% strikeout rate. Yeah, I know that his ERA is 1.23, but FIP at 3.89, XFIP at 5.84, he needs to improve uh, big time. I still love that splitter, though, which is why he's not getting, you know, I would demote him a little bit more, but I really like that splitter of his, man. Like, it's nasty. It's really nasty. So I think that if he get figures that out and whatnot, I think we could be for something special, but 33.3% whiff rate on that split finger fastball, like, that's really, really good, man. So he gets a C plus for now, but I'm just saying that that stuff seems really unsustainable. Um, and I'm curious to see if he gets lit up again. It takes some time. It takes some time. You could argue maybe he deserves a B minus because he is just, he's just coming in from Japan, but even still, I want to see a little bit more from him, but I'm a little bit worried because the peripherals aren't great. And because of the, um, you can't have a strikeout rate lower than a walk rate, man. Like that's just usually never a good sign. Um, C, this one's probably controversial. I'm giving it to Joe Musgrove though. Joe Musgrove has been really inconsistent, uh, so far to start the year. The ground ball rate is down, which I don't like, um, 35.1%. And I think that with Musgrove, the peripherals aren't something that I freak out about with a guy like him. I'm just not, but they're like really, really down expected batting average His weighted on base versus his. I mean, his weighting on base is already really high, and then his expected weight on base is even higher. His expected ERA is six point is eight point two six, and like I said, six point eight seven ERA. So he's been bad so far. I actually think you can make the argument that I'm being really generous by ranking him C, but you know he's usually much more consistent than this. So I think he deserves a little bit more benefit of the doubt. Yes, he had a weird start, and I understand that Kolek came in and gave up the grand slam, but even still, uh, not great. But because of the fact that he's Joe Musgrove, he deserves a little bit more. Um, leniency, a little bit more time to get into things. And before he left that start, he had like the most swings and misses of like any pitcher, the fifth most. In fact, um, it was on Wednesday that he had, or was it? No, I'm sorry, on Tuesday. So I'm not freaking out. I just think that he deserves a lot more, but it is a C for now because man, like you should be recovered by now. You know what I mean? One thing I do like though, vertical movement on his pitches, the curve still dives at like the perfect time. You know what I mean? The, the sweeper still, all that stuff. It's diving change up uh, as well. So I do like that the pitching stuff in terms of just the, the velocity vertical movement, none of that's changed. Maybe he's just having a really weird start. It's totally possible. Totally possible. And another thing, really high BABIP, really high BABIP for Joe Musgrove so far, if I'm not mistaken, 418, that'll come down. So it's, he's just a little bit too extreme. You know what I mean? He's extremely bad peripherals, but then, you know, the BABIP is extremely high, but then also like he had this weird grand slam thing. So, He's a C for now, not thrilled with him, but I think that it's going to get better and hopefully uh, better fast because they need him and they need his consistency. D plus for me, uh, Mr. Kolek and then Mr. Pedro Vila. Kolek is a guy that was brought in. I actually didn't think that he was going to make the team, frankly. I didn't think that he was going to make it over Wusat Go. I said this before um, on the podcast, but 5.87 ERA, he just hasn't impressed and it's not like he's been put in like the highest leverage of situations. Um, I just don't see it right now. I think it could get better. He's still a young guy, right? Like he's still pretty young. He's 26 and this is a rookie season, but not great from him so far. And then who was the other one that I gave Pedro Avila? I think Pedro Avila deserves more blame because one of the things about Avila, uh, is that he showed that he was much more effective in a bullpen role last year, more of a long inning reliever. And he has not been that so far in a uh, during the season, he's actually been good for negative war. Only f- two other pitchers have been negative for it, and that's Johnny Brito and Tom Cosgrove. So that's not great um, whatsoever. Now, I know, I know. We'll, we'll get into Cosgrove in a second, but that's not great for him, um, Pedro Avila. So, yeah, uh, I'm not I'm not excited. This It's not like they're using him as a starter and that we knew, oh, he's probably going to struggle here. No. One thing he did well was relief pitching. I just don't think the stuff is all that impressive, frankly, at least from what I've seen so far. Ground ball rate is really high, I guess, which is kind of nice, but 
Uh, I don't know, man. He doesn't look so great so far, and it's not like they've put him in really bad situations. Not like they've done that. The other one is Tom Cosgrove. Um, 26.7% strikeout rate. He's walking um, a few more batters than I would like. I will say with Cosgrove, he was awesome last year. He has a name that rhymes with um, Musgrove, so I appreciate that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think with Cosgrove, the hope is that a lot of his bad stuff, it came from the fact that he had that disaster inning against, who was it real quick? Was it the Dodgers? No. Was it the Giants? I think it was the Giants that he came in and was just such a nightmare. Like, only goes one out and then gives up six runs to the Giants. So I think a lot of his stuff is inflated because of that one outing, right? And again, he's a relief pitcher and it's early on in the season, so it's hard to... You know, if he gives up one home run, that's going to make his stats look bad. So I'm not thrilled about that. But other than that, for me, it's the walks. I'm a little bit more concerned with the walks. And he had to give up some walks last year. But I think that that's my thing is that he hasn't really amended that um, whatsoever. And I, in my opinion, it's a, he got blo- it's bloated. I, I do agree. But let's just face reality. He hasn't been good so far. So that's the other one. The only F that I'm giving for this team, and I would actually argue that I'm being a little bit too harsh here. I think he could actually go in D plus with the rest of everybody else in a strange way, but I won't. It's um our guy, Johnny Brito. I was a little bit more optimistic. My thing with him was, hey, this guy can come in. He's he's young and whatnot. He's still got some potential, but 9.1% strikeout rate is horrendous. 6.1% walk, walk rate. He's been terrible. 8.10 ERA awful the only defense that he gets is it's weird that you're putting such a young guy in such high leverage situations so early but the fact that he's not striking anybody out isn't great so that's why he gets an f for me it's the fact that the walk and the strikeout rate especially the strikeout rate is just so putrid that it's not like you've been getting unlucky and you just need to be a little bit better um johnny brito should probably be in triple a right now practicing his stuff maybe he's got a little bit more potential but for right now brito man whoo not great not great from our guy. If I, is he the one with the high? No, the high one with the high home run fly ball is is Pedro Vila. So that's one reason I think he could get a little bit better. I think that number is just due for a positive regression. But Johnny Brito, man, really, really bad start. Has literally killed the Padres almost every single time he's been brought out. You're just kind of dreading it. But the only thing I will defend him on, I think, has been used a couple of times in bad situations. But you can't use bad situations all the time to excuse the fact that you have an 8.10 ERA. You know what I'm saying? You just can't do that. So those are my fi- final grades, everybody. I know. What can you do? There's not much that you can take away from so early on in the season, but I think the Padres bullpen overall, I think it'll get better. Um, I think, I, I think, I think, I think Suarez has looked really sharp, but that's an area where I wouldn't be surprised if the Padres are good at the deadline and they don't have to sell. Then I think that's where they might add a little bit because I think guys like Cosgrove, guys like, um, you know, Pedro Avila, guys like Stephen Colick haven't stepped up necessarily. So I do think that they might be due uh, to go get a bullpen arm. And Yuki Matsui has perhaps been getting a little bit lucky. So I think they can address that later. Starting pitching, I'm fairly, um, I'm optimistic we'll get better. I just don't think this is who Musgrove is. Darvish I'm worried about. King I'm worried about. But Cease plus the Waldron thing, I think offsets some of my worries there just a tiny bit. So overall, I think Padres pitching, it could get better. I do. Well, I will say, Michael Walker looking good for the Royals right now. I'll tell you that much. That might have been an L, uh, letting that guy leave. But for now, that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for my grades. Dylan Cease and A, Eniel De Los Santos and Matt Waldron, B pluses. B for Robert Suarez and Yu Darvish. Yuki Matsui and Michael King get a C plus. Tom Cosgrove, or I'm sorry, Joe Musgrove getting a C. D plus for Stephen Cullock, Pedro Avila, and Tom Cosgrove. And then an F for Johnny Brito. That's about does it, everybody, for today's edition of the Lockdown Padres podcast, the only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever your podcast from. Go check out Baseball versus the World. Go check out me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. Next week, Monday, get your questions in. Send them to me on Twitter. You Leave them in the YouTube comments. We'll be reading them on Monday and recapping this Dodgers series, the first, like, domestic series, you know what I mean? And maybe we could catch them being all distracted by the Darvish thing, or not Darvish thing, the the Shohei Otani thing. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But until that next time, everybody, stay safe. And of course, stay faithful. My fire faithful homies, take care.